It's very good to be here again in Padre Pio TV. It's great to be back uh, here in San Giovanni Rotondo. And it's always lovely to come to the studio uh, to make a programme or two uh, for the English-speaking uh, pilgrims, the English-speaking friends of St. Pio, the, the English-speaking, the English language uh, spiritual children of St. Pio. So it's, it's marvellous to be here. And of course, being here, it's not all play and no work. I'm here uh, and I come into the studio and it's a chance to, to just, as I said again, to do a couple of programmes and to speak to you from this wonderful, uh, this wonderful organisation here. And of course, it's also an opportunity for me to catch up with the team here. And uh, it's always great to experience the wonderful welcome that the uh, team in Padre Pio TV have here in this, uh, this studio. It's also great because I don't know what you can see, but I don't have to put any you know, makeup on here because uh, somebody said one time, you need a lot of makeup, you need a lot of war paint. So they know that uh, they don't need to maybe do too much damage to my, to my features. <laughs> but anyway, it's wonderful to be here. We are here uh, in the afterglow of the uh, Feast of the Resurrection, the wonderful Feast of Easter. We have come through Easter Sunday. We have also come through Divine Mercy Sunday. And what we were talking to the pilgrims about in these days, uh, especially since we've arrived here uh, from Ireland in the last few days, we've been talking about the, the wonderful figures of, for example, Our Lady of Fatima, of St. Faustina, of Padre Pio, and of St. John Paul II. Of course, you would know that there is a real uh, connection between these wonderful characters. And I think the connection is myriad, is many, but I believe the connection is also very powerfully because of uh, the Divine Mercy, the whole um, story of the Divine Mercy. You know, Our Lady appeared in Fatima in uh, May of 1917. And she uh, came to speak to the three children, Saints uh, Jacinta and Francisco and Lucia, who lived much later. She became a, a sister in the Carmelite convent in Quimbra. But Our Lady entrusted some, some secrets and some uh, information to the children of Fatima to do with the war that was raging at the time, the First World War, which of course, as you know, lasted from 1914 to 1918. Also warnings in terms of the fact that the, the spread of atheistic communism, uh, which was starting to really spill over into Europe at that time. And then, of course, the other uh, information and secret, which came out to do with the um, life of the Holy Father and the suffering of the Pope. Um, we are praying, of course, in these days for the end of the war in Ukraine. War has come back to Europe again in our time and we are praying very much for the suffering uh, millions uh, in that country and we pray for peace once again. So Our Lady of Fatima, of course, was really asking, uh, you know, the children to talk to the world about the love of God and the God of mercy and the God of hope and the God who is, uh, uh, has a heart of mercy for all of us but also the God who, you know, like any good mother and any good parent, God pushes because he knows that, you know, we, we can do better and we can, you know, uh, answer the call to love more and more. St. Faustina, of course, lived in the 1930s and she received uh, visions and uh, she received apparitions from Jesus in the Divine Mercy, particularly remind, asking Faustina to remind the world of the of the great merciful heart of Jesus Christ. Of course, a lot of theology at that time was uh, primarily focused on, you know, God's kind of justice and God's, you know, anger towards the world in ways. And I think that the whole um, mission and message of the divine mercy was to remind all of us that Jesus is, is, is someone who reminds us that he loves us, that God loves us, that he died for us. The, the whole story of uh, particularly the, the, the end of Lent where Jesus kind of suffers, you know, his passion is scourged, is betrayed, is, 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 is mocked, is crucified, dies on the cross and rises from the dead is, is a very powerful, the powerful uh, message of love the love of God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus' merciful heart is open to all. 
and you know we can confidently approach the merciful heart of Jesus Christ. And I think that that was something that I think you know was very very powerfully inserted into that time, the the thirties and forties, when the world needs to be reminded so much of God's presence and God's love, and how the world also needs to be reminded of how important it is to reach out in love and kindness to one another. Padre Pio, of course, personified mercy because he. His, his, his mission and ministry for many years, for over 50 years, was in the confessional, was dispensing God's mercy day after day after day in the sacrament of penance. Padre Pio heard hours and hours of confessions. Now, Padre Pio was no shrinking violet, and he was no a sort of uh, meek and mild person. Padre Pio was tough sometimes, because Padre Pio was someone who, you know, reminded people, you know, guys, you, you have what it takes. You know, you need to kind of step up. Like any good mother, like any good parent, pushing their children a bit, pushing their children to kindness, you know, to love, to think of others. And sometimes that's tough, especially because in our world today, you know, our world is conditioned so much to look after number one and to mind yourself and so on. Whereas it's very important that we kind of take care, love and be kind uh, to one another and especially to the most vulnerable. So Padre Pio was, if you like, the administer of mercy, if you like, answering that call to mercy, because he would have known about Faustina in the convent in uh, those years. The executor, if you like, of the merciful uh, mission of Jesus, of course, was Saint John Paul II. He's kind of the 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 the, 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 the saint that binds it all together. You know, Saint John Paul, of course, was shot in 1981 on the feast of. Uh, our Lady of Fatima, the 13th of, of May 1981. And in May 1982, he traveled to Fatima in thanksgiving for his life. We all know the famous story of how John Paul was almost assassinated to death in 81. And St. John Paul II had a real clear uh, mission to remind the world of, God, of the merciful heart of Jesus Christ. John Paul II was someone, of course, who really did remind us all of a universal call to holiness because we're all called to, to not just be good Christians but to be holy, to be saintly people. And so John Paul II really did highlight Faustina, highlight Faustina in terms of the establishment of the Feast of Mercy, the first Sunday of Easter, the feast of, uh, great feast of mercy, which used to be known as Low Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. And of course he canonized Padre Pio and Padre Pio's great mission again was the heroic work he did in the confessional. So we look again at some of those images as, as we go through these Sundays of Lent, especially focusing in on mercy. Our own Holy Father, Pope Francis, is someone, of course, who reminds us that mercy is the beating heart of the gospel. Pope Francis, the week after he became Pope, on the Sunday after he became Pope, said that it's, it, you know, he's, he was convinced that mercy is the Lord's strongest message. So thank you very, very much. Uh, for being with us this week. We look forward to talking to you again next week, Lacoon of Day. So until then, may God bless you and we'll pray for one another.